Lenten greetings, everyone. I'm the Reverend Al Zadig, pastor at St. Michael's Church. Today's daily devotional is part of our Lenten series that I'm doing with my friends from the other five downtown churches in Charleston. And today, of course, coming to you from First Scots on Meeting Street. As we go through Lent 2021, we are sharing 31 of the verses from Psalm 22 in 31 weekdays of Lent. And today we come to Psalm 22, verse 13, where we hear David saying, They open wide their mouth at me as a ravening and a roaring lion. Now, before I get to verse 13, I have to say, I really love these guys surrounding me in the circle. I mean, these are gospel friends, great brothers. I would hang out with them even if they were not all clergy types. In fact, Holton, because we're at the First Scots Kirk today, I have not only worn my McZadig tartan for you. Some call it black watch. I call it McZadig out of respect. I'm wearing tartan blazer, the tartan vest, and of course my tartan pants. I only wish I could claim Scottish heritage. All kidding aside, I really do love these guys. We laugh a lot when we get together, and you know, clergy need that. You may not know that clergy need to laugh and enjoy trusted relationships. But Psalm 23, Psalm 22 rather, verse 13 tells us why. They opened wide their mouth at me as a ravening and a roaring lion. Let me explain. We don't know what King David is really going through as he wrote this. Extensive research brings up about nothing, so we're left to guess that maybe David felt abandoned by God after he himself made the decision to have that affair with Bathsheba, or when his very own son died, or when yet another of his sons died. We don't know. But some have said, wait a minute, David didn't write Psalm 22 about his own life. It was a prophecy for the future, a prophecy to describe the life of Jesus. Jesus, who knew the pain of facing ravening and roaring lions in the form of Pharisees who wanted to kill him. It also points to satanic attacks. 1 Peter 5 tells us that Satan prowls around like a, quote, roaring lion seeking someone to devour. As Christians, we believe this psalm does indeed describe the life of Jesus, who faced every wide open mouthed bull and satanic attack and defeated them. Which means when these kinds of attacks hit our lives, which they will, we remember that Jesus faced these bulls, these lions, even our own sin, and defeated them on that cross. He has won the battle. Which means we can go through life like this, and not like this, with clenched fists. It's not easy. And that is why, my friends, we truly need gospel friendships. Other people around us who, when we feel we're entering the mouth of Satan to be chewed up, we've got gospel friends willing and able to step in and say, you don't need to fight that battle alone. I'm stepping in with you to help you realize Jesus has won the battle. And so, my friends, gospel friends, helping you in the battle is a game changer. The only other option is isolation. But we know that isolation always leads to devastation. I need, you need, gospel friends you're willing to wear tartan for. Gospel friends who can enter into that fight and ingrain in your head, Jesus has defeated the lions and the bulls. You will be okay. So, I thank God for this circle of friends. My question to you is, who is in your circle? God bless you.